Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. Thank you very much for joining me. We are now working on the project I'm calling Four Crossings. This is a book that I have written, and this is part two of the series. Part one of the series, I took you through the process of making the pieced quilt with the flying geese. Um, so I want to show you what these different kinds of quilts look like. So the one that we're going to make today is the applique version. So um, you can see on the photo that the applique has a center applique and then appliques that run all the way around the outside. Keep in mind, you can mix and match the pieced block version and the applique version. That would be totally up to you. There's obviously always so many different ways that you can make a quilt. Go ahead, you have your freedom. to. You have my permission to do with my book and make the quilt that you're looking at. Um, or that you're wanting to make. This is the book. This is the Four Crossings book, and it does have all the instructions for the applique and for the pieced version. Now, with the quilt, the one behind me, you can really see what I'm talking about with the Four Crossings. This is the crossings block. Now we're going to work on that in session three, but today I'm going to take you through the steps of doing fusible applique with blanket stitch. Now you know that you could take any applique design and do it by hand, and there's so many different ways to do applique. So you have my permission to do whatever applique method works for you. I'm gonna take you through my technique for doing blanket stitch applique. Now I do wanna to talk to you about a few of the um, options with the book. So first of all, there's the full applique version. Keeping in mind, you can do many different colorings. And I was playing on EQ today and I came up with this coloring. I thought that looked really, really sharp. This is an Americana design. Um, I got the fabric images. These would all be available on Fireside Quilts. And it is a service that we can do where if you're interested in me picking out the fabrics for your quilt, this is pretty much how I would do it. You would tell me that you'd like this fabric on firesidequilts.com. And from there, I could design the entire quilt. Here is the close-up of the original. This is the one that's behind me now. The one behind me is mostly quilted, not completely quilted. And this would be the Americana version of it. So with the blanket stitch applique, I want to introduce you to a couple of my favorite products. My favorite current product, now I know that I've talked about a lot of different fusibles over the years, and this product came out about four or five years ago when I met with the people, and I have been pretty much stuck on this fusible webbing ever since. This is called Hot Fix Adhesives. Now it is a really fabulous adhesive. You can send it through your inkjet copy machine. It is not, absolutely not supposed to go in a laser printer, but you can send the sheets through the inkjet copy machine. Now, why that is so cool is because in the book, I have the designs drawn up. So this is like the layout for one of the sides, but I have the applique designs drawn up so that when you're working on this, you will know that out of the light green or whatever color you're choosing, you can make an eight and a half by 11 copy right out of the book onto the eight and a half by 11 hot fix adhesives, and then you just cut them right out. So the drawings are going to be just about as exact as you can get. Each one of these telling you, you know, you need this many pieces in order to make as many blocks as you needed in this quilt. So with the starting of that, this is what the center layout is going to look like. Um, I wouldn't draw right off of this. I would actually use the drawings in the book. And you copy that onto the hot fix adhesive. So here I have made my copy onto one of the layers of hot fix. It is a fabulous adhesive. It is so permanent that they tell me that you don't even have to stitch around the edges. I prefer stitching around the edges because I like the look of it, but you actually don't have to, and it can even go through the washings. I have not done that yet, but you also have that option. These are options that you have. You're gonna, then there's also the option, speaking of options, of putting it on a 12 by 12 sheet. Why would you want to include it on a 12 by 12 sheet? If you have an electronic 
cutting machines, such as a scan and cut, a silhouette, a cricket, any of those that you can normally cut out paper with, you can use this product adhered to the back of your chosen fabric and your electronic machine will cut it out. I own a scan and cut and with my scan and cut, these are some of the designs that I have done. Um, and you know that you're just going to get like, I mean, the perfect, the cuts are going to be exact every time when you use your electronic device. The problem is, is sometimes those electronic devices or the fusibles that you use to cut are not as dependable as they should be. I tried many, many different fusibles before I tried the hotfix because it wasn't even available when I got my scan and cut. The Brothers Scan and Cut people, they made a very nice adhesive, although it was really very expensive, but I really liked the product. When Hotfix came out, I'm just over the moon with it. I like it for lots of different reasons. One, yes, it makes a, when we look at this, yes, it is thicker. That's what Fusible Applique does. But this centerpiece, that is four layers of fabric, and I've never found it to shred any of my threads. Um, it also, it has a nice hand to it. So like these over here, this is just one layer. It actually has a very nice hand to it. It's only slightly stiff. Um, all, and, and it works when you are on your electronic cutting device. It cuts just beautifully, like it's if it is paper. So you just got to trust me on that. Give it a try. I'm not going to demo scanning on the scan and cut just because that's a whole nother 10-part um, series, and I'm just not in the mood to do that right now. All right, so these are some of the ones that I've done in the past with the blanket stitch applique, and this is what we're going to work on today. Now, I want to take you through just a couple of the steps. So we would take you would take your fusible, this one is the fabric F for gold. You would cut it out a little bit bigger all the way around and then press that onto the back of your chosen fabric. The instructions are going to tell you to press for a good 15 seconds, a real solid 15 seconds. Now that is when, remember that iron I showed you last time? I showed you how I use my HTV iron for pressing out fabrics to get the sizing in that I want to make my fabrics really, really crisp. I also use this iron when I want to press with my fusibles down because it has a timer and a temperature control. So when I'm using the hot fix adhesives, I'm generally going to crank it up to about 400 degrees, and I will set the timer for 15 seconds and then just put it right down on top, take my hands off, and let the timer do the job. Generally speaking, I find when I teach and I tell people, now you got to press this for 15 seconds, people are putting the iron down going, one, two, three, 15, done. No. <laughs> It's just not the way you want to do it. You need to give the adhesive all the time it needs. So that's another reason I like this adhesive. Many of the adhesives on the market, if you were to press for 15 seconds, the adhesive would adhere all to your flower and it would never then attach to your background fabric. So these are things that you've got to do your own testing for, but these are one of the many reasons why I really like this hot fix adhesives. All right, so you're gonna take your design, cut it out, fuse it onto the back of your chosen fabric. And so here I've got some pieces parts. Now, when I am going to do this, I like to put down my units a little bit at a time. And what I mean by that is I cut out my centerpiece, but I only, with some, some Roxanne's glue, I already took the paper off of this, but I'm only gonna adhere the very, very center of it. So I can use that to help position the first things that are going to go down. So there is my green and I've ironed these down. There's even in this case with the coloring that I'm doing here, where those little guys would be in the back of that little tulip shape, all right? I'm going to adhere down all of the elements that are in that particular layer and color, and I'm going to do the blanket stitch around them. That way, I'm able to hide my starts and stops underneath these tops instead of having to do, you know, try to do the starts and stops, which I'll show you how to do today. Um, but you can actually just start underneath the element and sew all the way to the end. So here, I could sew all the way to the end, 
crisscross cross sew all the way back down. When it's time for me to put the tulip edge down, then I'm already going to be able to lay that down and not have to worry about the starting and stopping. Which leads me to the next thing. When I am doing a project like this, you know how it's it kind of, all right, obviously, this is a 15 inch square. When you are working with this on your machine, now I happen to have a um, FAF performance icon that I'll be sewing on. It has like a, I don't know, it seems like a 12 inch space. I've got lots and lots of space that I can go around this with. But if you don't have that, moving a big piece like this around can just be bothersome, problematic, not so fun. With this adhesive, you can take a unit like this. So I've taken this tulip section, right? And I still have the paper on the back of the tulip. Paper is still there. I'm going to take off the little elements that go on the top, fuse them, take the paper off, fuse them on top of the tulip. All right. So now these are, they are very totally adhered. Now, I'm going to take the paper off and sometimes, just FYI, if you have trouble getting the paper off, you can take something like a seam ripper and just kind of score it. Don't go too deep, but just do a scoring on it. Then you can crease it and peel it off from the center. That seems to work a lot. Then you're not like playing with these little edges and roughing them up. Okay. Now with the paper off, I can take that tulip to my machine and do the stitching around the teeny tiny elements with the paper off, do those stitching. So then I've got these little guys done, which I only had to move, you know, my little teeny tiny piece around on my machine. Then I'll be able to take this. And at this point, these greens would already be stitched down. And then I can put that down, fuse that down again, using my big iron generally, you could use just little one here too, cause it's just a smaller piece. Then I'm going to do the stitching around the bigger piece. So at that point, I'll be having to move my big block. But when I was doing the little ones, I wouldn't have to. So the same idea with this. So here's one that has a circle in the minute, middle. Take your circle element, cut out your flower, leave the paper on. Take the paper off your circle element, iron it down on top, then take the paper off your flower just by doing a little bit of scoring. So now the paper is gone. There's still a lot of stability to this. You don't need to add a stabilizer or anything. And then you can do the stitching around your circle before you put it down. So that's what I'm going to take over and demo with you. Oh, threads. We need to talk about threads. What threads would I use when doing blanket stitch? Because the truth is any thread that works for you and is a look that you like, that's the thread that you should use. If it works for you, you like the color, you like the shine or not, whatever that is, that's on you. Let me tell you what I like to use. I like to use a 12 weight cotton thread. Now I want you to think about the weights of the threads. When we are piecing a quilt, I will use a 50 weight cotton thread. That is a fairly fine weight thread because when you're piecing in the seam allowances and stuff, that's going to help you get your most precise seam allowance. For applique, I want to use a 12 weight. What's the difference between a 50 weight and a 12 weight? The diameter of the thread. Now there is this whole how they measure threads and stuff. I don't think I need to know about that. I just know that a 12 weight thread is, if I'm gonna guess, I'm just gonna throw out a number there. I'm gonna say it's four times thicker than your 50 weight. For me, that's the look I like. I like that there is then that thicker edge going around my elements. Now, having said that, on a little piece like this, where these are just you know, they're just really, really small. You see, compared to my finger, it's a very small piece. I would not and did not use a heavy weight thread here. Here, I actually used a 40 weight cotton. I believe this was a King Tut from Superior because I don't want the really thick look. And you're going to see what I mean by the really thick look when we go to my machine.
Right? So I want to put the heavier thread, the 12 weight, which FYI is the same as a 12 weight pearl cotton if you're into hand embroidery and stuff. Um, and they, there's a couple of companies that make it. Sulky makes one. It's called Blendables or Petites. They actually come on a smaller little spool. So that's from Sulky. Wonderfill makes one. They call it their spaghetti thread. I actually have a pack of that somewhere. Oh, there it is. So this one's called spaghetti. I think it'll come up right if I do it from the top. This is the Wonderfill Spaghetti. I like this one too. It is a really great thick thread. And this is a collection by Susan Cleveland. And then um, I know that Aurifil actually has a collection too. Now I have not tried the Aurifil. Yeah, I've not tried the Aurifil yet. Um, and does, does Superior, I mean... Yeah, I'm not sure if Superior Thread has one. I imagine they do, though. So do your research. Look around, maybe buy one small spool of each and see if which one you like best. All right. So with the heavyweight thread in top, that means that I'm going to use a 90 top stitch needle. And I'll show you that needle pack when we get to the machine. The top stitch needle has, in the front groove of the needle, it has a deeper thick um, groove so that the thread actually can hide inside that little groove. And the eye of the needle is kind of elongated and it's bigger, obviously, bigger thread, bigger needle. That's kind of the matchup. That's always going to be the matchup. So with that eye being elongated and a very, very sharp point, that's what's required when you're using a 12 weight thread in the top. And then in the bobbin, I'm going to put a 50 weight cotton. So a fine weight cotton. So I've got cotton on the top, cotton on the bottom, but a heavy weight on the top and a light weight on the bottom. All right. So I think we are ready to go to the machine and I'm going to do the stitches on the machine with a very long, my widest possible blanket stitch um, so that you hopefully can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take us around a circle and a heart. So with the heart, I probably won't do the whole thing, but we'll start here. And I want to show you a the way that I like to do my valleys and outside curves. I'll do a circle and then we'll also do a point. So those pretty much are all the elements that you would probably ever use in applique. So with this, I have taken the paper off of the circle fabric, fused it down onto the big heart. Now I'm going to take the paper off of the heart. So I'll go over and we'll be able to do the circle. Then I'll have to iron this down onto the background fabric and then show you the stitching down of the other elements. All right, so let's go to my machine. So at my machine, I still have on there the guidelines for quilting and the diagonal seam tape because they're there and they're small enough that I don't need to take them off. I can do all of the applique work I want. And... I've put on my open toe applique foot. This is what is going to make it possible for me to see what I'm doing. Um, I use my open toe applique foot a lot. So that's just a personal choice. All right, I'm gonna, I've gotta get this over to the middle. There, all right. So starting with the needle in the middle, I have my heavyweight thread here. The first thing I wanna do when I am doing something like this where I have to lock the thread. If I were doing those stems, I wouldn't have to do this step because I would be hiding that underneath the flower. But for this, I am going to take teeny tiny stitches. So I'm taking four or five teeny tiny stitches, straight stitches. Now I'm going to switch to my blanket stitch. And like I mentioned, I am going to make this a very hefty blanket stitch. So I was testing it on my inside circle and you can see what that looked like. This is a big in, um, stitch. I would never use this one. Normally I'm going to use like a 0.5, I'm sorry, 2.5 and 2.5. But again, that is up to you. With blanket stitch, the idea is you want the needle to come off of the circle fabric in this case. So the needle is not on my circle fabric. It's going to then go in and come back out again. All right. Now my next st stitch is going to go straight, but stay again off the circle fabric. And then I'm going to turn. So after I've taken one stitch, you want to then turn. Then take your stitch 
and turn. Now, if you've got a straighter piece, this is a pretty big circle, I probably can get a couple of stitches done before I then turn. I also don't usually work very fast. And every time I turn, I have to lift my presser foot. I mentioned that I am working on a FAF performance icon, which is the top of the line from FAF. So with this, I don't have to lift my presser foot. The machine is doing it for me. And there's a lot of other FAF and Viking machines that will do that same thing. So I'm not having to reach back here and lift up a presser foot. There is no presser foot. It lifts up every time the needle goes down, the presser foot lifts up for me. So I don't even have to do that. So this is how you work around a circle. Now, let's say the circle is really tiny. If a circle is really tiny, I'm gonna obviously use smaller stitches and I might get one stitch turn, one stitch turn, one stitch turn. Don't force the element around. You need the element, whenever you're moving the fabric, um, you wanna actually have the presser foot lifted. So here, I'm going to get around to the other side. Um, and, you know, like I mentioned, when I'm doing a smaller element, like a small leaf or a small circle, then I won't use the heavier thread. But I really like the heavier thread. I love the look of it. And I think especially for demoing it, the heavier thread, you can really see what I am doing. And I'm like, all right, that's a bonus because otherwise you can't really see when you're on video. All right, so now I'm to the end. I have gone all the way around my circle. Now I need to end it. And to end it, again, I'm going to take, go back to a straight stitch, and I'm going to go down to a teeny tiny stitch length. Um, it's about 0.5 there. So I've done the lock at the beginning all the way around, then did the lock again and cut off my thread. All right, that's what that looks like and I think it looks pretty cool. I like kind of like this big stitch. I've never done such a large stitch. Now I'm going to take and go to my ironing board and adhere down this heart and be able to show you the stitching for the heart. All right, through the magic of television, I now have adhered the heart with the circle down onto my background fabric. And I'm going to start here on the top of this little heart, um, the top part of it. I'm going to lower my presser foot and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take those teeny tiny stitches to start with. Then I'm going to change to my, in this case, my extra big blanket stitch. There we go. And we're going to wake, work our way around. Now the first part is going to be just like the circle just taking your time. And I usually will set my machine up a little bit slower than normal. Um, you know, I, if you've ever watched any of my videos, you know that I oftentimes stitch kind of quickly. Um, not because I'm trying to race, just because that's what I like to do. All right, I'm gonna make this a little bit longer so that'll get us moving a little bit faster. There, now it's taking bigger stitches. Always on the right-hand side of the stitch, I want to try to be off the orange fabric. All right, so now I'm coming to the valley and the valley is really, honestly, I think that and the points are the two trickiest parts. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it, but this is how I like to do it. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna take one more stitch. Now, from here, I'm going to just lift my presser foot. I'm not going to put it down by the machine. I am going to manually, and this time it actually worked great, I'm going to manually, maybe even lifting up my presser foot so that I can make this stitch land right in the valley. Now I can turn so that my stitch will go inside the heart and come back right out into the valley. Then I can turn and continue. So it's just a matter of getting that placement, lifting your presser foot man with just your hand, move your um, flywheel so that you're making that stitch come down as close to into the middle of that valley as possible. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit here, not too much, work my way around so that we can get to the point, the point. But even if I'm trying to go fast, I'm just not going to go that fast. I just can't, not with these curves. So here it's going to be a little bit straighter. So now I can go a little bit faster. 
And then, you know, I do think that with blanket stitch applique, you and your machine need to be as one. You need to know that when you put your pedal down, your machine is going to go right away or is it going to pause? Um, you will start to get more and more comfortable as you go. All right, so now I'm going to slow it back down again. Let's go back down to reality here. Nice and slow. I'm at my point. I'm going to take it even slower. All right, I'm to the point. As I get to the point here, depending on how deep your stitch goes in, you might want to narrow that as you come into the point. So I'm taking that down two times. So now it won't be quite as thick as it was. I'm going to take one more stitch. I think I can get one more here. I'm going to angle into the point, and I'm going to do this one by hand so I know where it's landing. Okay, that looks like a good landing. I'm going to come right back where I needed to go. Now, just like when we were in the valley, I'm going to make my needle go up, and then I'm going to hover my foot and roll it down by hand, right there to the point. All right. Now I can spin it, so the next stitch will be right in. It'll just go straight in to the point. Okay, so this, I did that all by hand. Then hover again, and then take one stitch coming out of the point. And I did make this a very narrow point on purpose. I'm going to angle in. I'm still with a slightly smaller um, stitch width. Now I'm gonna go out, and I'm gonna go back to that original stitch width that I had and take my stitches coming out. All right, now, I've gotta tell you, this looks like to be the most perfect point I've ever done. And I've done a ton of these. Um, it is impossible to get all of your points perfect. You're just shooting for really nice. I want it to look really nice. Um, th having this goal of getting that point to be just perfect is going to make it possible for you to have points that are all really, oops, don't spin when you're on the inside. Did I mention that? When you are stitching, always spin when you're on the outside. I feel like I just jumped forward with that information. So never, if you spin when you're here, you'll actually end up making a V on the inside. So make sure that you keep it straight and only spin when you're on the outside. I know I've been doing that, but I don't think I actually clarified that in word. All right, now I'm gonna go a little bit slower as I get up here to the end. Stopping, turning, and here you can see, this is where I started with that long straight stitch. I'm gonna move that thread out of the way. I think I can get one more stitch there. Now I'm going to change my stitch back to the straight stitch uh, that is very, very small. Oops, got to hit the, my little button right. Now most machines, if you've got an electronic machine, you might even be able to get it to you know, do the memory so you only have to hit one or two buttons. Now it's going to take the teeny tiny stitches for my locking. Now let's see how my point actually turned out. All right, because I think it turned out great. All right, hate to brag, but that's probably the nicest point I've ever done. There's my valley. That's what you're shooting for. And look at that point. If I could do that every time, I would call myself a master quilter because it never happens. I, that is the most beautiful point that I think I have ever done on a piece. And that's just what you're striving for. It's not going to happen every time. You're just trying your best to get the best points and valleys that you possibly can. Blanket stitch applique, just like every other form of art or craft or cooking or engineering or anything that you do, exercising or running, all of these things, just they're going to get better and better and better as you do more. The chances of you getting that perfect point the first 10 times you try to do it with your blanket stitch applique, I'm sorry, it's just probably not gonna happen. But you just keep going. Do I take things out if it's not perfect? No, I've never tried to imagine that I could do it perfect. I just do the art like I feel like doing the art. And I'm gonna get, you know, is it, it is me. When you're doing the stitching, it is you. So all that to be said, 
just keep working on it. When you're at the end of a project, I would assume that you're better at whatever the project is at the end than you were at the beginning. But don't take things out. If you take things out, especially with fusible applique, you're going to have little needle holes everywhere, and that's not going to be any fun. All right. So for this project, at this point, you, you might want to take, and I think I showed you how I had that layout before, you might want to take this so that you know where you're positioning your pieces. I'm much more likely to just, imagine this is my background fabric. I like to just take my background fabric, fold it, fold it, kind of ish like this. So this is my background fabric, fold it one more time. And, oh, you do need to stiffen up your background fabric with some spray sizing. I think I might have mentioned that. I hope I did. But if I do that, if I spray size my fabric using um, one of the fusible, um, I'm sorry, one of the spray sizings like Mary Ellen's or Faultless, stiffen up your background fabric, then take it and make these creases in the fabric, then you will know where your placement is going to be. This particular block, the finishing block is 15 inches. So I don't know if you can see. I don't know. Let me see if I can lift it up. But I did draw. Yep, I can't really see it. I, I did do it, though. I drew a 14 inch square all the way around the block so that I was absolutely certain that my elements were going to be inside the 15 inch finished. After I get all the stitching done, just doing layer after layer after layer, just continue. All right, now my next layer goes down, stitch around that. Um, after I get that all done, then the instructions for the hot fix say then flip the entire project over, press it from the backside just one more time. After you've done that, then you can trim it down to the required size. And in this case, it would be 15 and a half inches. All done. That's your blanket stitch applique. If you have any questions, you can contact me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. If you're interested in the book, the link is below. Um, it's also available at my website, which is www.quiltingwithnancy.com. That's also where you can find out information about my retreat and traveling and teaching and the other books and patterns that I have. The products that I was talking about today with the, um, the hot fix adhesives and stuff, those are going to be available at Fireside Quilts. With the thread, you're going to have to look around for the threads. There's so many different out options out there. I think that you need to look around for the, the brand, the weight, the color. That really I'm going to leave on you. The iron is available. That's the HTV iron, that big flat one. That's available in the link also. And I think that does it. So that's the end of part two. The next time we get together, we will be starting the crossing blocks. Have a great day.